I found almost half a second when I was already pretty fast by making three changes, and a fourth if you include a mindset change. Here's how I did. I linked up with my buddy Marion from Get Good Racing. He is a very successful sim racing coach who has helped a lot of racers get closer to and achieve their full potential. He has a bustling Discord community where he's active and always around to ask questions to, and he's also been working very hard in his sim racing course where he's taken all of his techniques and tips and compiled it into one. I've personally benefited a lot from this course, so maybe you guys could too. All the links are down below, and it's worth saying this isn't an advertisement or anything. I like the guy, I like what he does, and the sim racing community is always better off with people like him helping us get better at this sport. So, I had all the information, I had all the theory, I knew what to do, how to do it, why I should do it, what not to do, what not to do, and how not to, you know what I mean. I, I had it there, but I was still stuck at a performance roadblock, which in I racing was about 2.5k I rating. And sure, if I would have sweated out, I'm sure I'd be a higher I rating, but that's roughly where I was when I was looking for the help, and that's where I find myself always hovering around to. Now, it wasn't easy to get there, but I'm stuck here, so... I decided to get in touch with Get Good Racing and arrange a coaching session. I sent over some of my data, my lap times, my recordings, telemetry. We arranged a time and a day and we got to work. And to say I was shocked with the results would be an understatement. Now, these tips were learned in a Formula 3 session, as I mainly love formula, but can honestly, this can all be applied to all racing. I'll try to keep this as short and sweet as possible, and the purpose is hopefully, if you're not doing these things, you can start doing them, but more importantly, to show you there is hope. If you feel stuck at a current performance level, you never know how or when your next breakthrough will happen, but there is a breakthrough there. And for me, I thought it would be these tiny changes. Instead, it was three obvious things I could change, and I changed within 20 minutes. So here's three things I needed to improve to get over my roadblock, and get to the next level, including a bonus one, which is around my mindset, which I know you'll love. Number one, the way I thought about the throttle. I had major hesitation on the throttle where my coach Marion told me, if you can be flat out, you need to be flat out. This sounds very, very easy to implement, but it can be tough when the car is on the edge and you're trying to feather the throttle so as not to spin, and hence why this feathering is making you scared of being or, or kind of hesitant of being on full throttle and you think if you're on full throttle you're going to guarantee the spin so it wasn't an easy change to make but once i did it made total sense the time gained from being flat out was obviously quicker but when i lifted from a hundred percent as opposed to sixty percent the car had a crazy turn in abilities as there was so much more weight being thrown to the front end this style of driving instantly made me a lot faster, but this was just the exit of corners and high speed bends. And I know it sounds silly, you know, use 100% of throttle. You'd be surprised where there's some places where you'd use 60% throttle. Maybe like uh, you're turning right and you're turning left. And in between the corner, there's about a half second. And you think, oh, I'll just keep the throttle at 50%. If you can pin it, absolutely pin it. Because not only will you gain extra time from pinning the throttle, when you lift off the throttle, you'll be able to turn a lot harder. So all in all, it's just, it was a weird concept for me, but now it makes absolute sense and sort of thing like I can't unsee it. But here to maybe better explain or to show or demonstrate, here's a before and after to help you visualize kind of my issue and how I got better through it by just having this aggression with the throttle, pinning it and not worrying about arriving in corners too fast because I now know I can come in too fast or I can come in on the limit and lift completely and throw so much weight on the front that I can do things with the car that I couldn't do before. So moving on to number two, that was kind of, you know, this is the exit of corners and high speed bends. That's the throttle kind of stuff. 
obviously my braking did come into the question. Now, Marion did give me a few compliments on the braking, saying that I was pretty natural with some stuff. Our braking style was pretty similar. I was a lot less consistent than him, and I had a lot less control over specific pressures. You know, let's say in Suzuka, there was a corner where I was braking with, let's say, 20%. He was looking for me to do 16%. So that kind of precision I'm going to have to work on, but that comes with time. Um, but I always thought I was clinical with my braking markers, my turn-in points, and my acceleration points. But never once I found a system to have a consistent and replicable downshift. Every corner. I never thought about it. I knew my downshifts were sweet, cool, and smooth. But that's not good, apparently. You know, I, and I did feel nice engine braking, but I just wasn't doing it soon enough. Marion told me that my downshifts were super late. Way too late meaning I wasn't benefiting from maximum engine braking, which made my stopping distances so much longer. He highlighted this because he showed me telemetry where he showed that I actually brake sooner than him and I shift later than him. So even though he brakes later, he was still managing to shift before me, showing me the amount of engine braking I was leaving on the table. So instead of waiting to downshift, I was told I should downshift immediately as it's available to do so. So have a listen here to the sound of my shifts before my coaching session and after. Not only does it sound super aggressive and cool, but it stops the car super fast and lets the car get a bit more better balanced in the corner as opposed to shifting mid-corner and shifting into the corner and stuff. So have a listen. You see the difference, but you see it now. Whenever you're braking like you're braking before, you instantly lose one tenth because of braking more. The car stops as if it was hit by a train head-on, meaning I could move all my braking points closer to the apex, and this was obviously a major improvement when it came to lap time. So, lastly, this tip, funnily enough, is in between the two of these. Number three, the gaps in my inputs. And again, these all sound very obvious, but you know, when you're trying to drive really fast, uh, sim racing, you know, it's easy to have these things slip. So the gaps in my input, sometimes I would lift in a corner, then I would wait and then get back on power, waiting for the car to turn. This made perfect sense to me if you need a lift, but you don't want to brake. What I learned from my session with Marion is that my opponents will gain on me here, or at least the ones who are fast, because when I lift and coast to lose speed, my opponents will stay on the throttle a little longer use a tiny amount of brakes, utilizing all the tools available to the car to go, rotate, slow down, all that. And this was huge because there's so much time being lost in the time I'm not pulling everything out of the car. And again, it's just easy for me to show you a quick after of this. Keep an eye on the telemetry here. That's key because you'll see these tiny little red blips pop up, meaning I'm using the brakes when the car is technically doing nothing. If you get me, I'm making it do something, meaning I can be on the throttle longer and I can get back on throttle sooner. This was pretty big for me and leads me into the bonus tip, if you'd like, which is more of a mental barrier I had to overcome. Number four, my mindset. As you can see, there's a trend here. I was driving too easy. And when it feels easy to drive, the car is feeling like it's very accepting of everything I'm doing. And it means I'm certainly under the limit. And I was. All of these tips were physical additions I could do, but the root cause was my attitude. I wasn't pushing hard enough, thinking fast enough, being precise enough. Where I thought I was, I wasn't again and all this. It took a good coach to sit me down and show me exactly what would happen if I applied myself more and tried harder to eke out those last few tents. And I knew this at the end of the session. Not only did I learn a few tricks that I could take into all my driving, I realized I just wasn't pushing myself to think faster, drive harder, be more precise, be quicker with the feet, with the footwork, essentially. All of it. You know, I just wasn't being fast enough. I was just viewing it as all in the car. So it gave me a lot to think about. I still have a lot to think about. I still have a lot of practice to do. But now I know I can break through to that next level. It just takes a lot of um, purposeful driving, a lot of deliberate practice really looking at telemetry and just seeing why are some people faster than me and asking why are people doing things that I'm not doing. Not just trying to see, oh, this guy breaks later, I'll break later. Well, it's like, why do I have to break earlier? In my case, it was the shift. Marion identified that was the root cause of my early breaking was my shifts. I would have never been able to break where he braked because I wasn't using the engine braking. I would always overshoot him. 
So being learning to ask why for things is probably the most benefit I took from the session. But if you want to see the full video of our coaching session, and I highly recommend you do because it's like a free coaching session. You can just sit in and watch. Make sure to check out Marion's channel, Get Good Racing. I'm going to leave a link to it down below. Guys, thanks for watching and happy hunting.